Hey bakers, John Cannell from Preppy Kitchen here. Have you ever tried to make a macaron and it comes out looking like this? Or like this? I have many times. Many, 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 many times. It's very frustrating. I learned all the wrong stuff the hard way so that you can make macaron the right way and end up with this pretty little French cookie. Let's get started. First off, let's talk about the eggs. This is a huge deal and there's a lot of opinions, but I think the best practice is to measure out your egg whites and put them in a bowl the day before you want to do this, cover it with plastic wrap, poke big holes in it, and basically the egg whites will dehydrate just a little bit. You want to get rid of some of the water. Is this necessary? No, you don't have to do it, but with these finicky little beasts, you don't want to take any chances. Like you want to dot every I, cross every T. So I measured out 100 grams of egg whites yesterday covered them, put them in the fridge overnight, and then let them come back to room temperature this morning. 100 grams of egg whites is kind of like a random thing to say for most of us in America, especially America. But it's precise for a reason. These cookies need precise ratios, and you can't just say like, oh, about three egg whites or about two egg whites. You kind of have to measure it out. So a scale is gonna be a best practice, okay? But you know, about three eggs-ish if you don't have a scale. I'm setting this aside. Now it's time to talk about the dry ingredients. I'm gonna measure out 130 grams of confectioner sugar, 130, and 140 grams of almond flour. Don't believe any of the labels. I know there's like a lot of good brands of almond flour, but they all say like super fine almond flour or like, you know, fine almond flour. And if you just trust them and dump it in, it's not gonna happen. Yes, it's fine, but it needs to be like Fine. So let's zero out the scale again. 140 grams, please. I say 140 grams, but I'm compensating because after you sift the stuff out, you're gonna be throwing away a couple grams of the big stuff. I measured it for you, knowing there would be some loss. We're gonna sift this out into a bowl. I'm excited because today I get to use some of my copper stuff for a reason. <laughs> because copper is actually good for whisking up egg whites, and I'm gonna do part of this by hand. I didn't do any swimming yesterday, because I know I need all my strength <laughs> for these macarons today. Just patiently sift it out. Don't try and grind things through. Just discard the big pieces, because you're actually gonna be doing this a few times. If you have giant lumps like this, go ahead and break them up, that's fine. But your goal is to get the small stuff, not to force the big stuff through your sieve. And you can see right here, look at all this nonsense. Most of you know that you would have to do this as a first step. But I've been reading tons and tons and tons of recipes and they all are so different. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay, so you can see I have a lot of, it's like prospecting for gold here, except this is the trash. You're the chaff. And here I have a bunch of almonds. Let me actually weigh this out so you can see how much I'm throwing away. Eight grams into the trash or your smoothie, whichever one you want. Now, we're gonna transfer this into a food processor and whiz the heck out of it. Quiet, bitch. All right, just whiz it. Don't make almond butter, but you wanna really like grind the heck out of it. Don't put your fingers in here, ever. And I like to give it a nice shake. Because the super fine stuff goes to the bottom and the top stays a little bit kind of like ruddy. That was a nice start. Blade out carefully. We're gonna sift it again. The golden lining, silver lining? Yeah. The silver lining of this whole process is even if you screw up, and your cookies aren't picture perfect, which I'm gonna tell you is likely, uh, especially if it's your first time, they still taste delicious. It was kind of galling through this process because I would just be like making batch after batch after batch with these like various imperfections. Like they were cracked, they were flat, the feet were fine, but they were angled out a bit too much. Some of them were hollow. Some of them didn't have like surface imperfections. Not usable for this video. This is like draft 20, but they were all delicious. I love the snacks. So we're sifting it out again. And here you can see there's a lot less stuff inside. It's all nice and powdery now, except for some of the big pieces. 
When I do this, I'm just breaking up some of the boulders because they got mushed up in the food processor. I'm not forcing out these big grains here. I'm gonna do this one more time, but we'll do it real quick. Do you think I'm crazy for doing this? You wouldn't, if you know what I've been through. <laughs> Last sift. The sifting part is totally the easy part. The things that will take you all the way left in like two seconds flat are the meringue consistency and the macronage, which is the mixing of the wet and dry ingredients. The macronage, meh, that's not so bad. The meringue, I had no idea. I can't wait to show you. If you've had some crazy looking macarons happen, let me know in the comments. Tell me what you think went wrong. I am all ears. It's kind of nice to commiserate about some things that went wrong. Okay, a couple lumps left over. Those get tossed away. And now my dry ingredients will get set aside for later. Now for the egg whites. First off, clean those bowls. Remember, we're dotting all of our I's and crossing our T's. I'm adding a splash of vinegar, white vinegar. And I'm just going to move it around. This glass bowl is totally clean. This one has a little bit of almond stuff in it. We just need to remove any trace fats. You want that meringue to be perfect. This copper bowl, will, this copper bowl, <laughs> will get used at the end of the meringue making. It's totally optional, but I found you really want to have a nice control that you can't get very easily from your electric mixer. You kind of have to like feel it. Feel the egg whites. I have my piping bag fitted with a number 12, like a little round tip. You can use a bigger one, but this is what I like. So have that set and ready to go. 100 grams of egg whites, room temperature into our bowl. I'm gonna start low and when they get frothy, I'll add in my quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. Break them up. Okay, they're getting frothy. I'm adding in a quarter teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. Now I'm gonna drizzle in my sugar really slowly, a fine, gentle cascade. And it's best to use super fine sugar if you can find it. Otherwise, it's not the end of the world. If you wanna make some really tasty and very quick and easy peanut butter chocolate chip cookies, Click up here, so fast, so foolproof. Let's talk about the meringue for a second. This is clearly not even a soft peak yet. It's looking nice, but we need to get to firm peaks, like all the way firm. They're gonna become almost marshmallowy, marshmallowy, which I didn't think was possible for a French meringue, but it is. Once you have those soft peaks, it's time to add in like a teaspoon of vanilla or whatever flavoring you're using. Okay, this is basically almost there. Nice stiff peak. You're gonna see that the meringue is starting to kind of collect in the whisk attachment. Very nice. Oh, almost there. So I'm just gonna transfer this into my mixing bowl. Look how pretty that is. See that? So nice. This is where most people, I think, make their mistake with the meringue. The problem is that it's not whipped thick enough. So then when you, after you do your mixing and you make the, the batter and you think it's all perfect, it gets too runny. So you really want that batter to be like actually pretty stiff because you're gonna have to tap, 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 tap those air bubbles out and it's a whole deal. Gonna use my copper whisk, so excited. This whisk is normally just decorative because I like copper, but copper is excellent for whipping egg whites up. So let's finish this up. <laughs> there we go. That's about right. Do you see how pretty this is? Like this seems like it's an Italian meringue almost. So silky and strong, but it's a French meringue and it just has to be whisked and you have to incorporate that sugar the right way. Okay. <laughs> You can know that your meringue is done when you turn the bowl upside down and nothing comes out. And you see these really, really stiff peaks. It should feel almost like marshmallows, I think. There we go. Do you see how pretty that is? That is crazy. I wanna taste it, but I'm not gonna do that. Now we're gonna begin our macaronage. Taking about a third of, my, third of a cup of my mixture and I'm gonna sprinkle that in and fold it in to get this started. 
use your spatula and you're going to scoop from the bottom of the bowl in. So you're kind of like, you're folding. You're folding the mixture. Most of you have folded before, but you're going to scoop from underneath and then fold in occasionally underneath. Fold in. It's a delicate balance because what you want to do is combine the wet and the dry mixture and maintain a lot of those air bubbles, but still not all the air bubbles. It has to be the right balance. So that's all folded in. Now I'm going to add the rest in. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. I just realized something. Boo. <laughs> I was going to make these pink, but you're supposed to color in the, uh, the macaroons before you add in your almond paste. Darn. You can see I'm scraping, I'm folding, scraping and folding. See that? That's not what you want. You want there to be like a ripple that's gonna cascade, cascading all the time, cascading. You can basically cascade and flow back into itself slowly. People call this like the wet sand or the lava stage. I'm adding in my food coloring now, just like a couple drops of soft pink. They're weird drops. <laughs> okay, now we can continue folding. And once you have this incorporated, you can kind of like move things around a bit and you're trying to get some of those air bubbles broken up because if you have giant air bubbles in your mixture, what'll happen <laughs> is giant air bubbles in your macaron and you'll have a hollow one, which nobody wants. You can see it's getting more flowy now, so it's starting to flow off, but I wanna form a figure eight. I'm actually gonna add in just Another drop of pink. This is not a best practice. You should have done this when you had your meringue almost done. Some people tell you to like measure the number of folds you're doing, but I find that not to be the case. You really wanna feel the consistency, wait for it to be flowing properly, and then stop and immediately start piping. We're almost there. Okay, let's see this figure eight. One, there we go. That's a figure eight, it's just about there. If you see this here, I can form my figure eight, I'm done. Put it down, walk away. Don't walk away though, you have to start piping. This is the cheat. I'm gonna be using the cheat because even though I think of myself as a good cake decorator, good quality piping skills, your piping skills have to be on point for these guys. If they're on point, you can use parchment paper on a flat baking sheet. For the parchment paper, just take a couple dabs, one, well, four dabs, <laughs> and you're going to just have a nice, flat, stable surface for your parchment paper. It's gonna glue it down. If you're using a macaron sheet, which has these little cheat wells, then just flop it down, it's okay. I'm gonna transfer my batter to a piping bag, but I'm not gonna transfer all the batter. So you wanna pipe perpendicular to the surface and then give it a little swirl to finish it off. Pipe, 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 little swirl. These wells hold in your batter and kind of fix a lot of sins. I don't have a steady hand. Like I, if you've seen my cakes, they come out pretty well, but my hands are shaky. So basically it's really hard for me to get a perfect dot. You don't want to fill your piping bag up all the way because it's basically gonna force more of the batter out and it's gonna be harder for you to stop. It'll just keep drizzling out because gravity is pulling all that batter down. If you notice that your batter just keeps drizzling, drizzling, drizzling out, you might have had meringue that wasn't stiff enough or you overmixed, you overmixed the, the batter. Sorry, start over. If you want, you can pipe smaller ones too. It's totally up to you. Some people pipe giant macaron. And as you get more advanced, you can pipe little cartoon shapes, hearts, whatever you want. There's a whole like art of macaron things. If you look up things on Pinterest and on the Instagram. Once you have one sheet all finished, it's time to tap. <laughs> tapa, tapa, tapa. So by tap, I mean slam. You can see those little air bubbles form and pop. Change directions. You'll notice the macarons spread out too when that happens, which is why you don't wanna pipe them all the way to the edge or to as big a shape as you think they need to be. And before we set these aside and let them age, I'm gonna to go to my crazy place and pop some air bubbles with a toothpick. <laughs> we popped our air bubbles, they've been tapped, they need to rest now. 45 minutes or so, if it's really dry where you are, they're gonna form a skin pretty quickly 
If it's really humid, you have to wait a long time. Maybe place it under your extractor, kind of get some air movement on them. You want them to have a nice skin so you can actually touch them without marring the surface. And you'll notice that you can't like press into them as easily. Once it gets to like 30 minutes in, 40 minutes in, I'll set my oven to about 320. So then it'll be ready to go right in. You're only gonna bake one sheet at a time because if you get some weird airflow happening, they're gonna form weird feet so they won't be perfectly rising. My macaron are out of the oven and they're totally cool to the touch now. So let's talk about what happened. Here on this like plastic rubber mat with the forms, pretty good results. I got nice feet and they all baked up pretty evenly. On my other sheet, some of them were good. Like the ones in the center look really nice. Some of the ones towards the edge, I've already nibbled on a few. It has this weird little divot here. And that's because I think my oven is running a little bit too hot and it also has to do with my piping skills. So partially piped incorrectly, partially the oven's running a little bit hot. You can fill these with anything you want. A whipped ganache, a regular old American buttercream, a little dot of jam. The world is your oyster. For me, I love, like beyond love, a beautiful, French buttercream. This is its natural color. French buttercream is made with egg yolks instead of egg whites, and it is a pipeable custard. It's insane. I think the color is beautiful, but to match our pink macaron, we're gonna dye this pink with some gel food coloring. I'm using the same number 12 piping tip I used before. I just washed it off. You can use a larger circle if you want, or a star tip, doesn't matter. It's all personal taste after this. Take your macaron, be gentle with it. It's been through a lot. <laughs> we all have. There you go. One macaron done. Several to go. This actually is delicious right now, but you should let this hang out for a day to three in the fridge. What's going to happen is some of the moisture from that buttercream or whatever filling you use will seep in to the shells and soften them a bit. So you'll have a crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside, creamy in the middle situation. That is what a classic macaron is all about. If you eat them now, it's gonna be delicious. Like I'll eat one on camera for you, but you should let them hang out in the fridge to mature for a few days. Just make sure they're refrigerated and covered in a sealed container. Time for a bite. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> they haven't even matured yet but they are like nice and chewy on the outside. They had a nice little crunch on the outside and the creamy French buttercream. Oh my God. If you like this video and you have a bunch of egg yolks left over after making this egg white based cookie, make my French buttercream. Here's a full how-to video. Click on it. You will fall hard in love with it. For something a little bit different, how about my German chocolate cake? It's chocolate, moist, tender cake with all that coconut dreamy frosting. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe. See you soon.